Hello, this is the Clay Golden. Welcome back. We're in Foundry VTT. We are looking at the Death House and we're going to continue with doing that. Now, we obviously moved on to the dungeon, um, but I'm not there. I'm <laughs> back in the house. Uh, so Joachim, I hope I've said your name right, sir, um, has pointed out a couple of things that uh, I've made my life harder um, and it would be really good to show you guys. Uh, I've had a couple of issues with accidentally moving my tiles and stuff, which is just stupid. Um, really, really basic. Uh, right click on your tile and lock it <laughs> let me just uh move, move up here so that whoops move up here so that you can see that so with this tile selected right click little padlock icon it means i can't accidentally move this tile around even when it's selected um, i can still do what i need to uh, really really obvious it just sometimes the brain doesn't work and i forget little things like that especially when i'm trying to record videos right click lock it there we go it's got red border now so it shows that i can't accidentally move it makes life so much easier uh, you guys are amazing just silly little things that actually make a huge amount of difference um so i did go through and lock these other ones it's absolutely correct that that is just sensible now he did also point out of course is look at the size of this tile compared to the image uh, i absolutely probably should have already gone in and just trimmed it down so the tile wasn't so large and just kept the bit I needed. Of course I could. I just downloaded it as it was and ran with it. Um, didn't prep it before starting the videos and stuff. Uh, but we finished a, this main part of the house itself, so I'm not going to go back and do that. But if you're replicating, just keep an eye out for that. Yeah, trim it down. Any art program, all you're going to do is select around it, crop. And because it's a tile, you don't have to worry about, you know, oh, now the image is the wrong size because you'll just drop the tile where you need it. So a couple of really handy little hints there that, uh, yeah, I should have pointed out as I was doing it. Just forgot. <laughs> just, just forgot. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Never pretended to be an expert or smart. <laughs> Okay, so with that out of the way, and again, thank you, Jay Kim, for your uh, for your input there. Um, you guys are amazing. Just you know, the little things that you help me with that helps you guys back uh, is really really useful. All right, so um, in the last video, just did uh, all the walls and stuff and chuck those in. Um, they've all snapped in fine. Um, I did just quickly update these and put in a few sound effects for these crypt doors. Okay, so. There's not a huge amount going on down here. And remember, so much of um, the Curse of Strahd is about atmospherics and things. It's not about there being a monster or a trap in every room. So uh, I've dumped Haley. Get over here. I've dumped Haley in the bit where they come down from the attic and this is where they arrive. So we just need to kind of go through and look at these areas and things. So, so the first thing it talks about is ghostly chanting that they can hear all the way through this whole area that culminates um in one particular area uh which is down here i believe um i don't have that i haven't found the sound effect i want to use for that and plus you know what it's like i put sounds on and then i drown myself out so i'm going to do that probably last come back and put that in as a detail uh, but what we can do is have a look at these family crypts which is kind of like the first area here now as always i've got the uh, module open in the other window um, so this is the arrival point and then we've got these different crypts here and they are lettered A, B, uh, C, D, E and F. So what's actually in each of those? Um, so we talk about the family crypts, um, about they're sealed with a stone slab except for these top two. Uh, and it says this top one's empty, this one's empty, this is Gustav's crypt. So it has his name, Gustav Durst, um, but uh, it says the chamber beyond contains an empty coffin. Okay, and then we've got D, which is Elizabeth's crypt. Uh, and this one talks about the fact that there is, if they disturb it, a swarm of insects will pour out. So let's find ourselves a swarm of insects. We can go to the SRD, go to monsters, and hopefully we'll have... Uh, oh, it's swarm of insects there we go and for the monster swarm of insects i know what i just did <laughs> oh, so ah, so we, look it's already done it. it's already popped them over here for us which is fine should put it into our actors tab and then drag it over just get rid of that duplicate 
Um, so swarm of insects doesn't really matter what insects they are, of course. Um, from a stat block point of view, in this particular case, they are centipedes. So all I'm going to do is just hide that for now. Um, and yeah, I've got my health bar on, but the players won't see the health bar and things like that. So I'm going to leave that, and if they disturb it, that's what's going to happen. Easy. See? Real easy setup for a lot of this stuff. Now these two crypts over here, the top one and the bottom one, this is Rose's crypt here. Okay, and it talks about the fact that um, the, yeah, so the chamber beyond is empty. So if you remember in the attic, there is the corpse of Rose and Thorn. Um, and part of the adventure that we didn't kind of read out is they obviously starved to death in the attic and things. And this is where they're supposed to be interred. Um, and if the players don't kind of play it right, then Rose and or Thorn will possess some of the player characters. Now, if the players bring those corpses, those skeletal remains, all the way down and put them in their associated crypt, it puts those ghosts to rest. Um, and any character that is possessed then becomes non-possessed. So there's not a lot to do with this area. It's all about the role play and stuff. So that's nice and easy. Uh, we then got the uh, the cultist quarters, uh, which I believe is this one up here. Um, again, not a lot of here, not uh, not a lot to actually do here. We've got some beds and things like that. Um, and then we move over here to this side, which is the well and the cultist's quarters. And this just talks about the fact that there is this well here. Um, bucket hangs from a rope. Five sides of the room served as quarters for the senior cultists, each with a wooden frame, etc, etc, etc. Each contains a wooden framed bed and a mouldy straw mattress and a wooden chest to hold personal belongings. Each chest is secured with a rusty iron padlock that can be picked. So we've got those little images on there, which is fine. So let's create some item piles for what we might find in these. So the easiest way to do that is just to grab any item to start with, just to create our item pile. Um, and actually, this first one's only got currency in it. So it's got 11 gold uh, and it's got 60 silver. So we can put that in. And then actually we can, weirdly enough, get rid of the, the main box itself, update the item pile, uh, and there it is. And we can just hide that. Okay, so again, the players are only going to see the, the image of that chest there, and then they can just pick it up, or we can, you know, as, as a DM, we can open it up and drag the currency across however we want to do that. So that's nice and easy. Uh, in the next area, let's create the item pile. Uh, and what is in this area? This talks about Moss A-Gates. Have I got Moss A-Gates? Uh, I don't want to be under there. I want to be on items. I might need to... See, I created them for the other adventure, didn't I? But I don't think I've got them for here. I need to, I think, create an SRD. Uh, my own, sorry, my own compendium for all of my loot. Um, and that way I can move stuff across. Yeah, so we haven't got Mus A gates, so let's take any old thing here. It doesn't matter. We'll take a bag of beans, that's fine. Uh, whoops, bag of beans, alchemy jug, whatever it is, doesn't matter. We can open this up and we can just edit this. I mean, I've happened to have chosen a wondrous item, that's a stupid thing to do. I've made my life harder. Get rid of that. Just give me just anything. Uh, block and tackle, that will do. <laughs> because all I'm going to do is, is change the name and the properties and stuff like that. So we change the name. We're going to call it Moss A Gate, which is fine. Got rid of the description. How much are these worth each? They're worth 10 gold each. So we can just update this. Uh, 10 gold. Uh, we'll give weight one. Uh, details, it's. Uh, yeah, believe it as a trinket, no attunement, no activation costs. That's that's a not that's not a thing. Um, none of that's needed, no effects or anything like that. So we can just literally put that in as an item and if we can Ooh yeah, hang on a minute. Where did I put because under user data did I put it token images 
I've got some things in here, but I wonder what I did with, because I'm not organized, terrible, terrible human being. Um, I wonder where I put, this is exciting for you, isn't it? <laughs> here we go. Uh, oh, uh, or not. I might have to come back and find this off camera or otherwise this is really extra dull for you guys isn't it i'll come back and do that off camera and i'll find and update that image i'm probably going to have the same thing in a minute anyway so let's take that moss agate and we'll put it over there and that tells me there's three of those so i can have three of those lovely uh, and i can have zero of those boom there's my item pile lovely again i'm just going to hide that uh, next one over here is going to be a black leather eye patch with a car um, carnelian worth 50 gold. So we're not going to have carnelian either, I don't think. No, nope. I'm going to I wonder if I can create a compendium and export it for you guys. It just contains a whole bunch of just basic treasure um, gemstones and things like that. There probably is one. Um, I'll have a look. I'll have a look, see if I can find one so I can share that with you. If I can't, then um, I'll find a way to, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll make our own if we can. <laughs> My regrets I might have just saying that just now. Uh, Carnelian. So again, I won't waste your time by updating my image right now. I'll find those and uh, I'll sort that out, but I can stick that in with its right price. Um, not Moss Agate, my Carnelian, stick that there. Um, and there's only one of these. Um, yes, we'll drop one of those and that's worth 50 gold. That's fine. And again, just hide that so that I know what that is. Uh, ivory hairbrush with silver bristles. So I'm not gonna have a hairbrush, I can't imagine. So again, just gonna duplicate this nice and quick to get something out there uh, and this was ivory and of course if I had a compendium with a whole bunch of stuff in here I could just swap these things out I need a few jewelry items that are worth like 25 gold a few that are worth 50 and stuff like that because it ultimately it doesn't matter what you're dumping in here it's just treasure so you know give them give them treasure that they can find um, and the last one down here is actually a silver short sword. So let's find a short sword. Uh, and we can drag this one out here and dump that here. But mm, what I want to do, what I want to do is copy that over here. Because this is, a, I want this to be silvered. Because obviously silvered weapons have a very specific, um, you know, uh, sorry, I was reading, uh, a very specific uh, effect on various things. So in here, I want to come and tick silvered. Okay, so we make sure that if this weapon is being used, it's going to be activated as a silvered weapon. So let's just open this again, drag over the silvered one, get rid of the normal one. There we go, one silvered. Short sword. So they're only going to find those once they pick those locks, of course. Right, so apart from updating images, and to be honest, does it really matter with the images? Because they're only going to be taking stuff out of there to stuff into their inventory. Um, short sword is fine. Yeah, will for the gems. Will for the gems. Let's make sure we put the effort in. Okay, then we talk about, next section, it talks about um, hidden spiked pit. The ghostly chanting heard throughout the dungeon gets discernibly louder as head one heads into the tunnel right this is area 26 i just need to check which area this is uh, and it is indeed this corridor right here okay so there's a pit trap uh, right in the middle here so this is where i try to remember how we did the pit trap before um, so it's going to test my skills we want to put this in here i want to create an image for this and again, I need to find where I put that image for me. Uh, under tiles, I would like to think I can find my pit trap icon without too much trouble. 
no i'm a disorganized buffoon and i know there's at least one person in the comments who's saying i want you to look at this thing that will help you with that <laughs> i will i promise i will uh there we go right i stuck it in the red brand hideout so i'm going to use that pit trap image here on this tile so we can leave that there that's brilliant and we can obviously um, hide this tile so they won't see it but we want to have this as an active tile trigger yeah so that when the players step on it um, it will automatically reveal this it will stop them from moving and everything else that goes along with that okay so just reading from the module what it reckons is it's a dc 15 perception uh, reveals an absence of footprints characters searching the floor for traps find it um the pit has sharpened spikes. Characters step on the cover, falls through, landing prone and taking a d6 bludgeoning plus 2d10 piercing from the spikes. Like, ouch. That's quite a lot. Okay, let's open this up. Uh, we're going to... See, that's interesting. It doesn't actually... in the, For the module, it says there's a perception test to see it. Um, however... There isn't a, it doesn't automatically give them a dexterity save to resist um, or rather to avoid falling in it. They basically, if they don't see it, they fall in it. Okay, so I'm not going to do that. What I'm going to do instead is I'm going to create a trigger tile here. Um, now there was a comment about me using images for these tiles so if I just create this this stays grey um, now the players can't see it the players can't see it if I hide it um, but I have been using an image and then hiding it so if I put an image in there and hide it it disappears completely so that I can't see it as the DM either um, and one of the reasons why I do that when looking at for example looking at the death uh, sorry at the death house itself Da, 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 da. go back to levels especially when we look at the attic I created all of these different little tiles for the creaky floorboards and things yeah which might be excessive but I did um, if I left them all grey uh, this one here this long one is actually on the ground floor um, because it's a uh, it's for it's this one here it's for triggering when they come in here to pause and bring up the image and things and there's another one in this doorway here uh, if I left them all grey, this map would be awash with those grey patches and stuff, and it re it would get a bit confusing. Um, and for you guys watching, it would really, really clutter up the scene. Uh, so that's one of the reasons I put an image on and then hide it so that they're invisible and they're not, you know, you're not looking at all of these going, blimey, that looks a mess. Um, it just keeps it a bit crisper. But you absolutely do not need to do that. And in this instance, where we've got very few of these, uh, I'm happy just to leave this grey. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't feel I need to kind of hide it. I can make it, you know, less opaque, etc. But that will always be visible because there isn't an image there. All right, so um, what do I want to do here? I want to make this active. Anybody who enters this, uh, I want it to. Just checking. Allow when paused. Well, it shouldn't matter because they shouldn't be able to walk when they're paused anyway. Anytime they do this, I want them to make a... a da, 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 da. What is it? What is it I want them to do? I want... <laughs> I don't want to activate, deactivate. I want to get them to... Uh, da, 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 da. I want them to make a roll, don't I? And I probably want R for roll. Uh Roll table. Uh, da, 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 da. Request roll. That's what I want. So I want request roll for the triggering tokens. This is part of um, the trigger tokens, of course. I want to request a perception. It's a DC 12, did I say? DC 15. Uh, make it a 
GM only roll, pass by dialogue auto roll, uh, continue with. Yeah, so continue with all tokens, uh, always continue. No, continue if any passed. Okay. So what that means is, so this bottom bit here, if you recall we did a video on this, we want them to make this roll. Now I'm hoping this is going to do this as a private roll and just roll it without necessarily telling the player. Um, any character that makes that roll, it will, sorry, I've just, it will carry on and do the next instruction. And the next instruction I want it to do is to pause game and show this tile. Okay, so they step on here. It forces them to make a perception check. If they make the perception check, it pauses the game and reveals this tile. That's the idea. Okay, so that's what I want it to do. Now, of course, they could come at this from any direction. So we're going to put a copy here as well. And I just need to make sure that that has copied across. Um, it's showing the right tile. Uh, BS7Z. That should be fine. BF7. Yep, yeah, that should be fine. OK, so either direction they come from. Character steps on either of those two. It will automatically make a perception check if they make it lovely jubbly. Uh, if they don't then the trigger on this one would simply be that um, it's going to da, 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 da. Hmm. I want to activate this tile okay so it'll make this tile active because I want it to be deactivated by default sorry hang on hang on sorry not active by default okay so if they see it it will show it but it won't trigger if they walk over it um, however if they walk over it and it hasn't been uh mm, hang on a second hang on hang on i need to i'll tell you what i need to do i need this to be active i've got to do it the other way around this tile needs to be active if we succeed in this check, then it will pause the game, it will show the tile, and there we go, and it will deactivate the pit trap. Okay, so they're going to see it, but that won't automatically set it off. So I need to do the same with this one and just add that on there. Um, that tile deactivate no idiot i'm having otherwise great days aren't i there we go so it will show that tile and deactivate it for this tile assuming it is active if they walk on it we want to show this tile so show hide that tile actually i should have just done use this tile Yep, <laughs> and show it. Okay, cool, we can do that. Uh, we can add a sound effect if we want to, etc. Or we can go into doing our, our our damage attack thing. Now, I'm not going to worry about that, because remember, we're doing... I know we're using lots of maps and lots of moving around and, and stuff like that, but because most of this, we're not using tons of automation on this at all. So all I'm going to do is get it to reveal, and then I'm going to manually roll that damage for them and apply it, and they're going to apply it to their character sheets in what you might determine as the old ways. Um... I mean, if I wanted to, I can get it to play a sound file. Uh, da, 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 it's a P, play sound file. And I, if, I, if I can remember where I put it, um, I can find my Wilhelm scream. <laughs> I'm going to turn that down because I know what I'm like with my volume for you guys. For, for everyone, why not restrict a scene? should be and no, actually won't restrict it to seeing everybody should be here anyway okay so that's 
in theory set up okay so this is the most complicated bit we've done on this one first um, Haley, I need you to put some light on thank you we'll get Haley to walk around here let's see if this works an unknown error has occurred excellent right so obviously I've got something wrong with my setup now it has asked for that perception check and it's gone with error I wonder why um, that will be to do with the fact that I've got some automation on but not a lot it's just giving me that unknown error but I did get my Wilhelm scream when she walked over that. Okay, so something wrong with these. It's not. I don't think there's anything wrong with these tiles. It's to do with the fact that I'm using an automation, this perception check. And what have I not got installed that I need to have installed for that to work? Um, it's going to be one of the mods, isn't it? It's going to be one of the mods. And it will be one of the... Oh, I know what the problem will be. It's not auto rolling for us because I haven't got that set up. Um, bear with me because we're not using MIDI QOL. And I can't remember what one, what was the, uh, the auto rolling that we went with in the end. Maybe it was part of... See, I'm automatically trying to automate stuff that I really don't need to automate um, because I'm not doing automation, but I've fallen down the rabbit hole of trying to automate this uh, when we said we weren't going to. So I thought it would monks. I thought we're using monks token bar and that. Hmm. So this is the problem when you <laughs> when you do different ways. Okay, so if I stay true to how this is supposed to work, I can leave that invisible and get rid of those, all right? Because as the DM, I'll be calling for that role as they go down there. Don't need to use the active tile triggers. Let's just have that as a pit trap. Um, I will ask them for the role if they don't make the role. And of course, I'm sitting here, I can just whack pause if I need to anyway and ask them for that role. That's the way I was going to run Curse of Strahd, not with all the automation. Sorry about that. Just You just kind of get hooked into automating stuff, but you end up sometimes over-automating, uh, and that's not what I want to do for this module. So make my life easier, actually, by just putting the pit trap in there that, yes, it will reveal if they tread on it or whatever. Um, but, of course, um, I can also just move that, deactivate it, delete it or whatever if they... Now, if they see it, I can just... Yeah, oh, yeah, if you've seen it. If they don't see it, then yes, it will go off. Okay. Sorry about that. That's a bit of a segue. It's just me losing track of what I'm supposed to be doing here and just getting carried away with automation and things. I really don't need to. It's the same with, with these items. I really don't need to do this. Um, I could have just chucked them at the side so they're available for... You know, and I just drag them across and say, oh, you find this. Um, and then they can stick it in their own character sheets. But uh, I don't need to use the loot boxes stuff um, but I'm so used to kind of trying to automate everything that uh, got stuck in there all right so dining hall let's move on um, so we've got this pit trap we now got the dining hall stuff contains plain wooden table flanked by long benches that's this one here in the middle um, and then we've got a larder now let me just check where that larder is um, because there is something in there so, uh, I think this is the larder. Yes, this is the larder over here. Uh, so in the larder, there is a creature. We've got a Grick. Uh, where's my um, monsters? <sighs> Grick, you ninny. Okay, so we've got a Grick that we can chuck out here. And again, I'm going to make it invisible. It's not going to be obvious to start with. It slithers out to attack the first character it sees within five feet of it. Any character with a passive wisdom um, score under 12 is surprised. 
otherwise it's empty. Right, okay. Now, now we move on to uh, 29, which is this area here. Uh, I believe. Again, I just want to check. Don't want to mislead you. Um, I know they're talking about here. They're talking about the junction. They're talking about the junction here. Uh, where it has ghostly chanting yep, throughout the dungeon. Notice to be louder to the north. When one of the characters reaches midpoint of the four-way intersection. So, in other words, right here. Four ghouls, former cultists, rise from the ground on the spaces marked X on the map. So that's fine. You don't need to know what that is. Um, so we're going to have some ghouls. So let's stick our ghouls over here. Uh, and then we're just going to dump them onto the map. So one is going to come from uh, here. One from here. Uh, one from here. What I like is the idea that these ghouls climb out of the ground to attack. So again, they're all going to be invisible to start with. All right, so uh, we're nearly there. We've got stairs going down, which is the next one over here. And I'm not sure there's too much particularly interesting with that. Um, yep, it's just stairs down, which is fine. Um, and then we've only got a couple of areas left here, haven't we? We've got the, yes, so they've got this small, what looks like a dining room, this bedroom, and then we've got this main chamber here. Okay, uh, give me a second. Yes, of course, and we've got the stairs up. All right, so um, this, is the, this is the next one to look at, which is the Dark Lord Shrine. So festooned with mouldy skeletons that hang from rusty shackles, etc., etc. Uh, if the characters touch the statue or take the crystal orb from Strahd's hand, because that's what this statue is, it's a statue of Strahd, um, five shadows form around. So have we got shadows? Or we have. Excellent. Okay, so we are, again, should have been doing it from over there. Two, three four, five. Let's move these around a bit. And again, want to make those uh, invisible. So yeah, there's CR1 creatures. Five of those will try to attack them. Okay. Uh, there is also a concealed door just to the north. So go here, this, this one here, which I put in as a normal wall. And of course, that needs to be a secret door that is closed. And let's make that a uh, rocky stone sound. Sounds like a nice, decent one here. All right. So uh, this little passage here, by the way, it leads up to this um, this hidden trapdoor. So a ladder here um, that comes out above in the death house. Um, which area does it come out in exactly? It comes out, put our levels on, back to the ground floor. It actually comes out here, exactly here. So what I might do is put a, put a tile in here. I wonder if we've got, ha happen to have, not that one, uh, in the core data, Let's look for icons. Uh, I want to find trapdoor, really. Where might that be? Tools, sundries, equipment environment, traps. I want just want a trapdoor, not a natural trap. Uh, nah. That's not right at all. Um, Equipment? Nah. Uh, containers? No. Environment? Environment was one I was just looking at. Yep. Um, commodities? All sorts of things here. That's just literally stuff you want to buy and sell. 
Hmm. Um, d -d -d materials? Nope. This is good. You can tell I'm well prepared for this one, can't you? Um. All right, let's just find something. Let's just find something. Find a box. Let's just use that for the moment. I'll obviously have to find a better one. Um, and we can stick that in the corner. Whoops. Kind of try and get it in the corner. I'm holding down the wrong key, that's why. Uh, and hide that. So I can change that to a trapdoor image just to represent the fact that if they find it, that trapdoor will be revealed. Now, it does very specifically say that they cannot find this trapdoor from above. They can only find it from below here. Once they climb up, then it becomes visible from the top. So I will need to change that image, definitely. Uh, but obviously this gives them a quick way out rather than going all the way to the top of the house, um, to the attic, and then all the way down the stairs and things, especially if they end up having to flee. <laughs> All right, so just these two other areas to go here. What are they? Um, uh, the cult leader den. So the door in the southwest corner is a mimic. Now, hang on a minute. Where exactly is that door? Because I didn't put a door on here. I didn't think there was a door. Um, hang on, bear with me. Okay, so it wasn't on my map, but actually it's telling me that this is a door. Don't do that. That this is a door here. Or at least it looks like a door that's actually a mimic. So we're going to put that in as a door. Did it say southeast corner or south? Yeah, it said, yeah. Get it right. Um. Is this southwest corner? Is my map the wrong way around? Yes. Southwest. Yeah. They've got in the module they've got the left of the screen as north, which is what confused me. So if that's north, this is south over here. That's east up and west is down. So they are referring to this one. Just checking. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> poor brain. Uh, so we've got we got a mimic that we can slap out here. Now, of course, mimics traditionally, we see them as being chests, but that's not true. They can mimic a number of different things, just anything that really people are going to go want to put their hands on. Um, so doors, trap doors, chests. Um, it can be, they can be furniture. They can be all sorts of different things. Um, and if you really want to terrify your characters, make a mimic into a chair that attacks them when they sit down and bites them on the bum. That's always good fun. So I'm going to put my Mimic there. Whichever way they come, as soon as they try to open this door, um, that's when the Mimic is going to attack them, uh, which is just fine. Thank you very much. Uh, but again, not a difficult encounter, uh, not a difficult kind of uh, area to set up or anything. There's not a huge amount to do here. And the last area is this cultist's quarters here. Now, this is the, sorry, the cult leader's quarters here. And it talks about two ghasts. Um, living in cavities of the wall. So let's take our ghast here. Um, one is there. This is a new thing, by the way, that when you drop a monster onto the onto the canvas directly from the SRD, it automatically sticks it over in your um, in your actors tab. Didn't used to do that. I don't know when that came in. It must have come in with the last um, game engine update. Um, but it's quite nice, quite useful. It does that automatically for us. So there's a couple of ghasts there. And these are actually Gustav and Elizabeth uh, Durst. They're hidden in the cavities behind earthen walls. Um, they burst forth and attack if someone removes one or more items from the footlocker. So let's just hide these to make sure that they don't accidentally get seen. Okay. Um, but what is in that footlocker? A whole bunch of stuff in that footlocker. I'm going to need my items SRD again. Do, 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 do. Here we go. So it talks about there being a... Gosh, this, this might take a while. Uh, cloak of protection. And this is what I really do like about item piles, is the fact that this is exactly the kind of thing it's useful for. Um, I'm going to change this in a moment, but we've got a cloak of protection. 
we got potion of healing was it just one four potions of healing i mean you know this is going to load them up ready for everything uh we've got a chain mail shirt chain shirt just a normal one in there we've got a mess oh a mess kit uh yeah we've got a mess kit that can be in there uh alchemist's fire yeah brilliant we'll have hello we'll have that thank you very much um a bullseye lantern There we go. We'll slap that in there. Uh, and Thieves Tools as well. Thieves Tools. There we go. Okay, so there's a whole bunch of stuff in here, which is great. But it also includes a spell book. Um, mm. Now, we've got a spell book here. And this is a slightly... In, let's drop it over into our items. Because if I open up the spell book, we've got a description here, of course. Um, details. Uh, yes, we'll say it's magical. Um, I mean, we could say it's a resource. doesn't really matter. Uh, but we need to drop in what spells are in here. Now, how can we do this? Of course, we can just edit it. Um, and we can drop these things in here. I'm wondering, and I've not tried this because, you know, trying stuff before actually, you know, doing a video would be ridiculous. <laughs> can I... Can I dump these in here as a, a description piece? Nope, doesn't want to do that. Can I do it like this? I can from that point of view. Yes, okay. So it's automatically going to link these things through, which is good. Um, right, so brilliant. What do I need in here? Get out of the way. Disguise self is in here. Uh, identify. I want... Mage armor is going to be in here. Magic missile. All the basics, really. Magic missiles in here. Lovely um, protection from evil. Protection from evil and good. I'm going to leave a space because now we've got some second level spells in here. Dark vision. The irony of having to get this far in the darkness to get the dark vision spell. Uh, hold person. Uh, and magic weapon. Okay, brilliant. So let's save that. Uh, and that's how it looks like in here. I just want to edit that and put in a couple of lines after that. There we go. So it looks a bit nicer. So these are the spells that are within here. So the player can open that up to look and see what the spells are. And of course, we can copy them across to the character, etc. if we want to. Um, but that's all right. That's going to work very nicely for us. Where did I put my spell book? Dump that in here as well. Brilliant. So Thieves Tool, Spell Book, Potions of Healing, Cloak of Protection, etc. We can update that item pile there. Um, I think what I might do is just make that... Uh, duh, 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 duh. Oops. Blimey, I can't use my fingers. Let's just make that a bit smaller. Let's shrink that whole lot down. And we just make it invisible. It doesn't matter that it says it's cloak of protection. Um, we can change that, of course. Identity. We can just say. Um, so this is the locker. Let's call it locker loot. Yeah, we go. Easy. Um, that's it. That's this floor done. That's all we need to do here. Uh, so what we can do, of course, is we can put in a tile trigger here. So if they choose to go up the ladder, um, where it will take them out, uh, we can do that if we want. Um, and we can also do one for down here as well and take them down to the next level. So let's just get that uh, next scene created for us. Create scene. And this is 
the death house dun <laughs> dun death house dungeon two. Okay, um, and we need to find our not there user data. Thank you very much. Uh, let's go through our maps, uh, Curse of Strahd, and I'm fairly sure I didn't upload it. Um, lower dungeon, that one right there. Bomb, smack that in. Uh, this is the lower dungeon, so this is where the the stairs are going to come out. All right, so I'm going to leave that here. We're going to do this one in the next video. Um, all I need to do is create a couple of and now I, I'm not going to use levels to do this this trapdoor here up to the house and this one down here and the reason why is because we're not using levels for these maps this is a different scene so I would want to use monks active tile triggers for this to say actually if they click on it to go up the ladder it will change scene and dump them in the correct place so I want to um, transport them from one place to the other then it was also uh, there was another one as uh, it's stairways uh, we looked at that mod as well that enabled us to do that in quite a nice way and would transfer us across scene that worked really really well not sure which I'll use I'll probably use monks active tile trigger because we've already got that installed so this will be a lot lighter on the the amount of modules that we have compared to when we did Fandelver and below uh, and again with over here for these stairs going down, um, something like Monk's Active Tile Trigger that would just basically teleport them to here would be absolutely perfect because, again, this is a different scene rather than uh, a different level. I could have done these two as different level tiles, uh, but I didn't. <laughs> Either way works. All right, well, thank you for watching. Sorry, there's a little bit mucky there with uh, with some of the... I didn't get all my images and stuff sorted beforehand. Um but that's not a big deal, is it? You know, some of those things they're not even going to necessarily need to see as images anyway. Uh, they're literally going to pick those stuff up and run with it. Um, but I will look at the treasure compendium stuff to see if we can find a compendium that already has all of those gemstones and everything in it, which will be really, really nice. Just a really easy way to be able to say, oh, add that compendium. There's all my basic treasures would be good. All right, thank you very much for your time and for watching. Uh, leave a like, leave a comment, leave a criticism, <laughs> and I will see you in the next one. Take care now.